Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today I've got an exciting guest who does what I do. He offers a lot to the audience to ensure that they get to take away a lot of things to make their lives better. In fact, he is a dreamer, a poet, a rapper, a singer, and he's the host of a podcast and it is divine. In fact, his show is called Delivery Bro Bros. And I want to tell you, Delivery Bros is an awesome show. I've been on there. And not only that, but this guy delivers magic. And you'll see why, because with me today, he's going to share some of his slice of life with us. In fact, he's got a lot that he will tell you when he gives us a little bit of his intro about what he brings to the table, I got to tell you, he is so positive. He shares with so much light in joy that he has when that he just emits when he talks. You'll see it. You're going to see it and you'll be able to hear it for those that are listening on audio versions of the show. Without any further ado, Anthony Anthem Williams, welcome to the show. I am going to say right now that was like the best intro i've ever heard like somebody introducing me so like um wow i mean i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of, i like if you can see me right now i'm kind of blushing right now so like um <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it i gotta tell you because you are an amazing entertainer you deliver stories you provide current events you bring just a mass of positivity to people you get them laughing, and you just deliver in all kinds of ways because you have an inner message to share on a lot of things, about a lot of things to a lot of people. And it's much like what I do, and this is what you and I do because we love people so much. But I love what you say when you open with your show, and I want you to share it with my audience too. Um, I would like to say that when it comes to my show, like I try to leave it as an open table discussion with all different types of personalities. When it comes down to it, people are afraid to open up discussions about certain things. I open that table. I open that door, whether you're the small time businessman, whether you're a wrestling promoter, whether you're an actor or an actress or comedian, like, it doesn't matter to me. You could be the average Joe down the street. You got something you want to speak on or you have a story you want to tell. Make people more enlightened. I've had survivors of human trafficking. I've had military veterans. I mean, heck, I mean, Miss Mayhem, you're actually a good example of that. You're a veteran. <laughs> and thank you, thank you. I mean, I love speaking to people who have stories they want to tell and it also makes people aware about other things like um i was speaking with a gentleman the other day um and he was um explaining about um his brother having autism and it was very important to me because i feel like yes we're getting more aware on the subject of autism but i don't think we speak about it enough like have a regular conversation about so when you think about that what are the subject of human trafficking which has been around for a very very long time like um the um the wonderful woman i talked to um about that she she went through that in the 90s Mm -hmm. And it's become even more heavier over the last couple decades now. It's been like over 20 years since it happened to her. And we're seeing that the um, that type of market is still going on very strong. And I feel like people are not aware enough to know this could happen to anybody, male, female, well, you know, it doesn't matter. It's interesting that you mentioned that because – Sex trafficking, human trafficking has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have shied away from it in actually taking a look at it or talking about it simply because it seems 
taboo or that it wouldn't happen here on our on our turf in America. We've seen movies where children are taken and those things are happening abroad. They're not happening right here. And that is simply not the case. Not mm -hmm. only are children going missing here, but they are being human trafficked and sexually trafficked here in the United States. And it's happening significantly all over the place. And yes, there are still cases and many cases where they are being um, snatched up and taken abroad and sold and um, gone into slavery that way. But you're right, it just has not been addressed and it hasn't been addressed significantly enough. The awareness is now starting to become much more mainstream and law enforcement and a lot of um, other, law enforcement as a, as a whole has taken a whole Look, another look at this and been addressing this on a on a much tighter scale than ever before and you'll see different things when you roll through some smaller towns um where there has been uh task forces that have shut different businesses due to that particular issue down or you'll see organizations in that community putting banners up saying this is um some type of week or tribute to this cause, but you are 100% right. And it's really neat that you've had an opportunity to talk to somebody who has experienced this firsthand. But yeah, I mean, and to be quite honest, like you hit the nail on the head. And that's why my platform stays open because I don't wanna be just like one singular entity or one subject. There's too many subjects out here in the world that have not either A, been touched, or B, are not talked about enough. That's why, like, you and I have these platforms is because we want to open up the discussion. We want to make people think about what is really going on in the world. I mean, you can only get so much from television and social media. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, just... I feel like this is another way to do it. I mean, express on the airways, the streams, whatever you got to do. And, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I agree mean, with you 100%. I put a lot of my time and effort. I mean, I haven't even been doing it that long. I've been doing this since November, but I've always thought about having this idea of doing this concept. And at first, I'm not going to lie, like in the beginning, it was kind of like some rough drafts. There was a lot of interesting content some very explicit some not trying to figure out what do i want to do with this do i want to do i want to try to be a howard stir want to be am i trying to be joe rogan and then i realized i got to be me in this that's, it. Like, that's just how it goes like like everybody can talk about the same old stuff on every podcast but if you don't bring a variety then what are you doing you're not trying to strive to be your own legacy. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm like super famous or anything like that, but I feel like it's important to solidify your own. So. That's true. It's true. You, I mean, we were made and designed with individual fingerprints. Think about how many millions of people there are in this world. And not one of us has the same set of fingerprints, nor do we have the same set of footprints or lip prints. So with that, we weren't wired internally with the same ideas, personalities, or anything. So that uniqueness is something that we need to bring to the table. And our core beliefs is something that can be expressed in such a way and delivered to the people who really need to hear it. And that's what really was really neat when you and I spoke when I was on your show, I, it was, the message was so clear and the genuine, the genuine love that you have for people was so clear that you want to get a message to the, to people. And, and much like what you just said earlier in delivering a message about things that we don't talk about, such as autism, this is something that has been slowly starting to be an awareness campaign. It started to come out um, about five or 10 years ago where you would see the puzzle piece, the ribbon with the puzzle piece, and you would see it on the back of a few people's <laughs> car. 
and then it sort of kind of died down and it really needs to stay abreast with people because there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that people don't know when it comes to behavioral patterns and something which is really significant and especially for like oh, law enforcement is and anybody in the community if they're approaching somebody who is on the autism spectrum they may not know how to interact with that person and they can mistakenly believe that that person is under the influence of something or they can encounter them and it can turn violent when in fact it can be handled in a completely different manner and it's through education and awareness that can make the interaction be completely different so educators and law enforcement and those of us just on the street or cashiers at a restaurant um, or at a convenience store knowing that can make all the difference in how we interact with one another so right on the money with what you're talking about I agree. Um, because when it comes down to it, I um, I've seen a lot of things in the news where, like innocent young men and women have been in situations and altercations with, like police officers. And I'm not like anti police and nothing like that. It's just the situation is they didn't know that this person was on the spectrum, and with that, somebody got either badly hurt. Um, some have even ended up, um, unfortunately deceased in the situation. Oh. Yeah. So like, cause I've seen a lot of articles from like situation. There was a situation in New York where this guy's little brother was, um, autistic and, you know, he was just playing around or whatever. And he didn't know he was doing something wrong. And, um, unfortunately the police officer said he was hostile and shot him. Oh, I didn't know about that. I, yeah. I think that education is so important and yes. it's yes. just it's really for us like you and I who have such a love for people that we want to get those messages out there and if at the very least it hopefully instill that in somebody that says I want to get this message to those in my community or bring this to the school system or something in, in any one of our shows on any given topic that allows change for the healthy, the better. Um, you and I, are, we, we just love this kind of thing. So, and this is just one example of the many different types of things out there that we talk about on our shows. Oh yeah, okay. like mental yeah. health is something I always find important as well. I believe we actually touched that subject when um, we, were, um, we were speaking on my show. Um, mental health and that's something that I feel like is still taboo in a lot of communities um, especially um, especially how I grew up like um, the African-American community itself is like very silent on the subject a lot of minority groups are and I feel like it's important that we sit down and really have these discussions because it used to be all It'll be all right. Just pray about it. You'll be all right. Da, 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 da. But oh. yeah, like, but there are people in our communities that have suffered either trauma because of where they grew up in or they've gone through, you know, a situation of domestic essence of domestic violence. It could be a lot of things centered towards um, that individual to where it's um, they might need to get some help for the mental psyche. And a lot of people don't understand that it's more than just, okay, talk it out. You're going to be all right. Just fight, um, just fight the feeling. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, here's something open. I've been open about it on the show. I suffer from bipolar disorder and depression. Okay. Um, I was diagnosed a couple years ago. But a lot of people were even saying, like, if I would have got di um, diagnosed sooner, um, who knows? I mean, the fact is, I I was just like that, the same amount of just like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm lying to myself. But really, in fact, I didn't realize how important it is not just to cover your physical or like 
um, any other type of, you got to have balance when it comes to your health in general, whether it's your physical, your mental, I mean, your emotional health in general, because if you don't work on yourself, how are you supposed to have good relationships with people? It's true. Yes. Um, it is true. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, like, people, um, people are very observant. That's one thing I've noticed. They can know, um, they know that you don't have any love for yourself. They might, they might not say it to it, to you or something, but when it comes down to it, people are more observant than you think. You have a good point there. And, and fortunately with that, it's a double-edged sword because mm-hmm. those who love you, they see something and they want to help you. And then on the other side, you have people that are very judgmental. But going back to something that you said that is crucial is that we really have to take care of our inner being as well as our outer being. And it's we are a one body whole, not just partial. And so if we aren't, like you said, in balance, then our exterior life isn't in balance either because everything that's internal comes out externally and it depression it can come out in the terms of us not being able to get things done around our house or whatever and then um, there's other things but one of the things that you mentioned is that you have people in different cultures whether they're subcultures or major groups that will say everything's going to be okay or just leave it in the hands of um, God, right? Yes. Okay. If that's in within the church or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with having your belief system in that and also seeking help outside of that. But here's the thing, and this is in many cultures, and this is why we're seeing high numbers in self-sabotage and... um, and fatalities, self fatalities, in which I really don't like talking about because it hurts to think that that someone has expressed it that far. But we're seeing these huge, huge numbers. And the thing is, there's a stigma in many, many ways, in many cultures, in and subcultures, in seeking help. And a lot of times, they will feel that they've been labeled as not worthy or as insufficient or there's a deficit within them but it's no different as having than having a scratch or a broken arm or whatever and you just need to take some time to heal whatever has um temporarily needed to be healed for that part of the body there's nothing nothing wrong with going in and seeking different options that will make you feel better nothing wrong with that at all I will uh-huh. say this, like, um, it's, a, it's it's sad that, like, you know, that when the topic of, like, you know, self-harm or suicide or anything comes up, it's a very hard subject to talk about. Um, as a person who has lost some friends, I've lost, like, like two, um, two good friends of mine in the last six months. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It, it's sad, too, because they were young, like. And like the one, like what really hurt the most is just they didn't have nobody to reach out. They felt like they didn't have nobody to reach out. Mm-hmm. Like, and like I mean, they were barely in their early twenties. That's why it's just like this is something we need to talk about. We need to talk to our people. We need to check on our friends. Yes, you- we do. Checking on people is super important. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand is they think, well, why didn't that person just call? Or how could they not think about what the effects are? The the challenge is that it's just the opposite. There is a different opposite in the thinking line within that. And until you study and understand why people come to a conclusion where they feel that there is no alternative, then placing a judgment on somebody is another one of those things where um, it puts somebody further from talking or getting help. So um, this is such a, it's it's so hard because people really, 
feel that that is a better mint than than what we understand and you'll see a lot of things out on social media that say that you feel that they're trying to use encouragement and in some ways are really not understanding where a person is at and so we really need to encourage people to talk more and to connect more and not just send out something on social media but actually pick up the phone and talk to that person or go yeah. go over to where they are at we are so in such a world of living in texting or just sending something out um on our wall of whatever social media site it is and think mm -hmm. that that's enough but we've lost connections with people when it comes to visually seeing and visually touching people and actually visually or auditorily connecting with them that i think that that has something even a small part or a major part but it has something to do with why this is starting to become more and more i don't want to say common but more and more happenstance and um it's very very unfortunate because like you said a lot are younger yeah i mean we live in a very different era than maybe what my parents grew up in your parents like when it comes down to it like i mean one of the biggest problems is i mean we're not talking about it enough i mean for instance the suicide rate has gone up so high in just the last two to three years alone yes and, and it's a lot of young kids like we're talking like we're talking like early teens into mid 20s it's on a scale that's so broad we're living in an era where mental health is so vital that it needs to be talked about i mean I, I, we got to be careful on what, how we talk about it, though. Right, for instance, there's some controversy right now with a show called 13 Reasons Why. And that deals with a lot of psychological trauma and suicide. And okay. They, like, people have even said, like, the suicide rate went up higher after that show came out. I feel like what they were trying to do was raise awareness, but I don't feel like they were careful with it. Cause I've seen the show, okay. seen both. and it's a touchy subject, but it's a subject you got to be able to execute correctly when you have these discussions. Because I'm not gonna lie, that that show will make you depressed. <laughs> well, you know that's it's really interesting you say that because it is a touchy subject, and mm -hmm. it is unless you really understand a lot of what is going on with in the mental health industry mm -hmm. from a lot of the different mental health issues, whether it's bipolar, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. PTSD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and a number of other DSM um, diagnoses. You can't really just say, why didn't this person X and think that there's a blanket reason or way to fix something because that is not the case at all there's so much more involved in this and we just because we don't understand it we we cannot i don't know it is very delicate you need to be able to if you're going to um to do something like what you're talking about in reference to this film or a series or whatever it is yeah. you need to make sure that you know enough about it where you can help somebody or you're going to direct them to the right places that can help them i agree i mean this is this is absolutely crucial that um that people that that are talking about it like you and i are talking about it right now and as we're talking i'm going to pull up the national suicide prevention line so that anybody who's listening um can contact them and they can either contact um someone to get help or to find out how to learn more in either educating themselves or um 
uh, to volunteer. And I think that's very important, and I'm glad you're going to share that. Because, like, I've, I've touched on the subject of mental health um, quite a few times on my show um, with different guests over the, um, over the course of the months. And um, one thing I always do, because I even, I even put, like, a disclaimer. This might, this might trigger you. This might be something that you also relate to, but um, just a disclaimer. I always put a disclaimer on whatever I do when it comes to this, like when it comes to these touchy subjects. And sharing that hotline does help. Okay, here we go with it. Let me say it real quick. It's 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-8255. You can go to the website, Suicide prevention mm-hmm. on lifeline.org i believe they have a texting um, um a texting service too you can use let me suicide prevention on lifeline.org so both of those things will get you in touch with where you need to go it gives you an opportunity there to on their website to get help to learn about it, how to get involved, and there are providers and professionals. And one thing that I do want to say is that if you know of or you need to talk to someone, please do call and start talking to somebody. There is always so many ways that you can learn more. And like you, you said you waited for a little bit too long. Yeah. I did. And there's so much opportunity to make yourself start moving in the direction that will make you feel better. And oftentimes we know that there's something that just isn't right within us with whatever situation that we're dealing with. And oftentimes we don't share it. We hide it. We put on a mask and Mm -hmm. we present ourselves to the world as everything being okay. And we don't want other people to know what's going on. And unfortunately, in certain aspects, such as the topic that we're talking about, this isn't one that, that if there is any, any consideration whatsoever, reach out because Anthony's there, I'm here. You can reach out to either one of us yes. Um, yes. or even the number 1-800-273-8255 um, or the website again. So Anthony, too, tell me, so you've had celebrities on your show as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I've had uh, some actresses and some actors. Yeah, let's go to a lighter approach here. Um, I don't want to make your show super depressing. You're, I know no, you're like, oh, gosh. Actually, that's okay, because we need to talk about it, and avoidance, it, you know, completely avoiding the subject is not something that I want to do either. So, no, I, I'm totally fine with that. Well, you are a trooper. And for those who are still sticking with us, we appreciate it. Absolutely. So, now, back to the show. All right. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like such a dork. Okay. No, um, no, no. This is good. It's important. But um, I've had a few actresses and um, actors on the show. I've had a um, lady by the name of Shauna Toft. Um, yes. Oh, oh, you've had, uh, you met Shauna? I know Shauna. I have not oh. met her yet in person, but it will be shortly. We oh. heard her talk. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, she's been, she was super nice when she came on the show. Um, I saw that she's uh, working on a couple commercials and everything. Um, since the last time we talked, I am very happy for her. Um, I've had uh, a couple comedians on there. I've had Alan Gitlin, aka the G Man. Um, and he is old school New Yorker, New Jersey guy. Love him. He talks about a little bit of his lifestyle, like how he grew up. You know, I like I like talking to some of the old school guys just because of the fact that they got stories that not people in my generation have yet. They were there in the moment. Like for us, you know, we could just take a picture on a cell phone or something like that. But when it comes to like talking to the old school of any type of generation or any type of um, genre they're in or in in entertainment. um, I felt like that was a very insightful conversation with him. And then I, um, I just released an episode today with um, a gentleman by the name of Tommy Moore. 
I mean, this man has spoken to Andrew Dice Clay. Talked to um, Joan Rivers back when she was doing comedy. On mm. the I mean, talked to her. Talked to um, oh, um, Don Rickles. Like we're going like old school. He's met Pryor. He had Robin Williams randomly show up at his comedy club. Oh like, my when, goodness! Yeah, like he was telling me what happened is basically they had a sold out night. It was like um, a big old showcase of like local guys, you know, a lot of headliners and stuff like that. And this guy pulls up in a car and he was like, hey, is there a way we can get three tickets for the show? And they were like, um, we're sold out. And so he kind of walks back to the car and he's like, well, how about this? My friend will perform for free if you, um, if you can get us three tables. And they're like, well, who's your friend? Robin Williams. He was like, nah, get out of here. This ain't no Robin Williams. Da, da, da. So they walk up to the car. It's Robin Williams. He was like, I, 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 he was like, man, I had to hold myself for a second. I almost fanned out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so Robin Williams shows up to the show. He does, a, um, he does an hour and 10 minutes. But not once. He did it three times that night. Oh, no kidding. For free. How um, cool is that? I mean, seriously, you like Robin Williams has always been a big inspiration to me. So to hear that somebody actually met him and got to see what he was like. Uh huh. I mean, that that was like an epic story. I love the fact that I get to hear these different stories. I mean, like, for instance, I had a gentleman by the name of Cornelius Maxwell on and he's trying to start um, some funding that can help a lot of troops that come back home. And um, give them like give them like a program where they can like work themselves back in civilian life, work on their mental health, work on their finances. You know, make something positive for them for serving our country and um, just take care of our troops. Um, he was also um, he's also the gentleman that was give, um, keeping me aware about autism. He spoke upon that. Like he spoke. Okay. Upon, yes. I, um, he's a lovely man. He's wonderful. Um, if I'm correct, I think he's from Texas like you, if I'm correct. I think he's either in Texas or he's in the Southwest. He's around that area. Okay. Um, he's he's wonderful. Um, retired military, went to Iraq three times. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I, I, I had nothing but respect for him. Um, and of course you, but that's a whole different story. So, but well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean. Miss Man, like ever since we first um had dialogue, I've always found you to be very intriguing and very earnest and honest, and you've been very kind. And to be quite honest, like talking to you was just amazing. Like you're definitely in my top like top list of guests. Sincerely, like oh my gosh, I I love talking to you. <laughs> Thank like, you. You're easy to talk to, though, Anthony. I've got to tell you. Well, I mean, I just, over the years, it's been a habit of mine to just talk to anybody. And to be quite honest, my mom will even tell you that she was here. She remembers when I was like five years old, we're sitting there in the grocery store walking around and I go to a random guy getting like some fruit or something like that. And I'm like, hi, I'm Anthony. Nice to meet you. What's your name? And my mom was like, are you running for Congress, son? I'm That's like, pretty neat, though. You know, when you are a people person, you can reach out and talk to anybody. And there are people that can't do that. Oh, yeah. Like, it, I think like, that that's really neat that you can do that. And you and I talking, though, we, we've had a lot to talk about. And, and our, our conversations have been really good, and they have been for – a good length of time too they haven't just been like hey hi how are you because we have a connection our anyway we have a yeah. connection it's pretty good so um mm-hmm. but when you interview people you have a lot of information that you're able to withdraw from people too because they connect with you that's what you do and you're really good at it. Your shows are good. And I know that you not only have your shows 
you're on anchor, but people can listen to your shows on LinkedIn. Yeah. And uh, I basically kind of like, I put my show out on um, anchor, Spotify, Google play, um, basically all the major platforms, Podbean, Stitcher. I know that's a very popular one. Um, I'm working on maybe starting to get to the point where I can start doing video recorders. I could put it on YouTube um bear with me and plus i just got this camera like like last week and I'm, this is the first time i'm actually breaking it out because I, yeah so um yeah you're getting an exclusive moment with me i love it i love it you know i need to get a haircut or something but that's a whole different story um <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's shave. I, I love it i love it no you know video happens to be something that is in demand people love checking out what's going on the visual is a thing and um i for me i really like being able to see things and i i'm both auditory and visual oftentimes mm -hmm. i feel like i'm a little bit more auditory but there's something that solidifies it when i see something there's just a connection there and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier too and mm -hmm. that just that whole, you know, seeing a text message or something scroll down somebody's wall or a message, it isn't, you've got to make that connection with somebody. Oh, yeah. And, like, it, I yeah. feel like it's a bigger feeling than that. Like, I can't express my emotions to you through a text. I can't tell you I'm mad through a text. I can't tell you I'm sad, I'm happy. There's no emotion towards texting. It's so true. Like, it's we don't, so true. If we don't have emotion in dialogue, then what's the point? Like, we're human. We express ourselves in different ways. It's important to have that. Like, that is so true. And especially if you're an animated person and you like to use your hands and... Yeah, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit more reserved. I don't... I, I think maybe... In my younger days, I was less reserved with my hands. I think I spoke a lot more than I do now. But after having done some, been coached doing public speaking and things like that, I think I'm a little less animated, I think. But, um, but there are some people who are very animated. And really, because like we were talking earlier, our fingerprints, our footprints, our lip prints, we're unique and our personalities are unique. And when we make that connection with somebody and we have them right there, even if it's on a FaceTime or a video mm -hmm. feed, like something like what we're doing and we're able to visualize somebody, it connects you better than it does on just a text, a written typed feed or some of some sort. But I really do think that you'll, I think I would like to see your shows in video. I would love to see that. Well then, um, ladies and gentlemen, coming soon, um, Anthony Anthem, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. Maybe going live with feed. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So um, that's going to be part of the next um, the next journey, the next chapter. I don't know why I'm saying like our representative. Um, so... Um, I want to talk in my regular voice now, but sincerely though, um, yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, a lot of investing within myself, just trying to get better at this craft and making sure, you know, when I'm talking to um, any guests that I have on my show, um, I make sure that I bring an essence of, Hey, like when you come into like the doors of my podcast, um, it's an open discussion. It's a place where you should be able to feel comfortable and coming in. Like, we'll talk about whatever you're feeling like. You can express yourself however you feel. Hey, and if I don't agree with it, it's whatever. We can have a discussion on that. We can have it and still be friends at the end of the day because regardless of how different we may be, there's always going to be some common ground. And that's the end of the story on that one. Like That's true. I feel like that's the picture we need to look at. The bigger picture is, yeah, common ground. There's always going to be common ground. We're all human. We all put our pants on the same way. We always put one leg at a time. We tie our shoes. We we shower. We brush our teeth. We all do the same thing. We all got a routine that more than likely somewhere down the line is very similar. 
You are so right on the money. In fact, growing up, we all played in the same sandbox. We swung on the swing set mm -hmm. together. There wasn't all of this hatred and, you know, pitting each other against each other. It wasn't like that. We all tried, you know, to, to play and get along and things like that. And unfortunately we are in this climate now where if you don't like something on my social media feed, then I'm going to block you or unfriend you or whatever. And it doesn't need to be that way. What oh makes the world turn so good is all of the uniqueness that we have. And it allows us to have an opportunity to see things in a different perspective where we can learn and grow from one another. And that's what I really like. I agree. I, mean, I got friends of um, all different backgrounds, whether it's religious, political, um, the neighborhoods they grew up in, subcultures, whatever it may be. I got friends all over the place, like probably from here to Japan. And I don't let my personal beliefs in life ever make somebody feel like they're belittled, they're unloved or whatever. That's not, that's not how you're supposed to walk on this earth. Me and you both. Me and you both. I don't have to agree with you to like you and vice versa. Yes. I just, I just, I still want to be your friend. Exactly. I'm the mm -hmm. same way. Like, we could have different ideals, but we would probably have something so similar. And that's what's important. Like, when it comes down to it, like, we only have one life. And how we live that life can be, we can be hateful and spit poison in the air and in the atmosphere, or we can bring a positive light to a world that's already got a lot of negativity as it is. We bring more positive light. It makes it more of a celebration of life when we're helping each other out, being there for each other, bringing out a hand to lift up anybody that's down and not judging them based on how they grew up, but what they're doing with their character. Like, if they got great character, that's all that matters to me. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think we're going to leave the audience with that thought because it is very profound, Anthony. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. I want also the audience to know where they can find and tune in to listening to Delivery Bros. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Anthony Anthem, a.k.a. Mr. A.k. You can find the uh, Delivery Bros, D-E-L-I-V-E-R-Y, B-R-O-S, one word. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, Anchor, and um, other major markets as well, even Podcast Addict. Um, and you want to check me – pardon me. You want to check me out on social media, um, you, can find, um, you can find it on um, – Delivery Bros 816 on um, Twitter and on um, Instagram. On Facebook, Delivery Bros Kansas City. I'm sorry, Delivery Bros KC. What's it abbreviation of Kansas City? KC. Um, yeah, that's where you can find us. Um, and feel free to inbox me. You want to, you know, like ask me a couple questions. I'm, I'm always open to any type of dialogue and any type of expression. And um, like, Feel free to, you know, like and subscribe and leave a few comments. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. This is Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I ask that you share this with all your friends, family, coworkers, and those that you even don't know. All over your social media feeds everywhere. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Rebecca Sounds Reveille.